Linda Dykes is in Hampshire. Hi! Oi. In her quest for excellence, Linda Dykes is personally inspecting the homes of volunteers for the army of obsessive cleaners. Very nice. Well, Mark, you're my ideal man, actually. 45-year-old bodybuilder Mark spends almost 50 hours a week making sure that everything in his life is perfectly clean and ordered. I start cleaning as soon as I get up, and I'm probably cleaning pretty much before I go to bed. Oh, dear. <laughs> Who pulled these this morning? Is this you? Yes, oh, why? Mark is particularly obsessed with making sure his curtains are precisely aligned. What's wrong with them? I don't know, just dust my head in when they're halfway across the window. I'm oh, sorry. No, it's not you, it's me. Is that even? They're fine. I actually get quite stressed if I can't tidy things up. If I catch it out the corner of my eye, the curtains are not right. I'll have to adjust them, otherwise I just can't relax. There's people that like things tidy, but Mark definitely takes it to a whole another level. Oh. <sighs> Quite unusual. This is my sink, which is nothing special apart from the fact that I clean it about 50 times a day. I'll wring out my cloth like that, and where it splashes, I have to go over it again. And it's a bit of a catch-22, because when I go over it again, then I have to wring out my cloth, then it splashes. And then what happens is I'm wringing out my cloth, and I suddenly think, oh, no, the work surface needs a clean. And before I know it, I'm actually doing a bit of a whole house clean, which wasn't really planned. Push, push. Mark's just as obsessed with order in his professional life. He works 85 hours a week running his own gym. I spend probably two hours a day actually rearranging the weights. I'm actually probably worse at work. There's a lot more people to make a lot more mess. It would be good to actually put my bizarre habits to, to some use. And you never know, you know. The more people I make like me, the less unusual I become. I think there's a good reason. Mark's leaving behind his own strict routine to help somebody who lives 200 miles away in Lancashire. Forty-seven-year-old personal assistant Julie shares her three-bedroom house with her teenage daughter Laura, and her vast collection of childhood mementos, ornaments, clothes, and cuddly toys. My hoarding started when I was a little girl. My mum's a hoarder. My grandma was a hoarder, and I believe my great-grandma was a hoarder. And Julie is no different. I'm not one for chucking stuff out. Especially behind my settee, the first thing you see when you come in, you just wonder, oh, what is it? What's underneath there? There's all sorts of sewing machines, video recorders. When it gets on my nerves, I just throw a blanket over it. If I can't see it, it's not there. My biggest hoard is my clothes. I keep going to charity shops and buying clothes. I walk in, see a bargain, I have to buy it. More clothes. <laughs> the house is now so full of clutter, that it's become impossible to clean. The last time the house got a full clean would be two years ago when I had uh, windows put in, because obviously it means moving everything, so I clean around it. <laughs> as well as the clutter and lack of cleaning, there's the problem of damp, mould and mildew. The state of the house is a major source of embarrassment for 15-year-old Laura. It gets annoying. I spend most of my time in my room. I want my mum to get rid of the stuff because then I can actually invite my friends over to the house. Julie is now desperate to make a change in her life. My clutter does make me feel anxious. I'd like to think that by the time I'm 50, which isn't that long away, <laughs> I will be in complete control of my house and of my life. Mark has agreed to try to help Julie bring order to her home. I think I might rub my earlobes before I go in, because that sometimes helps you calm, doesn't it, really? I've seen it. A lot of powerlifters do it. Right. But with his stress levels already rising, how will he cope with the state of Julie's house? <laughs> Hello there. Oh, I'm Mark. I'm Julie. Nice to meet you. Good wow. Excuse the little brat. <laughs> Do you want to come through to my living room? Yeah, why not? Come on through. Oh, blimey. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. So what's that there? Just is it like a bed, is it, or...? No, it's just boxes and all sorts in there, and to tell you the truth, there's some stuff I don't even know what's behind there. Right. But if I stick a blanket over it, you can't see it, it looks a bit tidier. Yeah, like sort of out of sight, out of mind. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of on my mind, though. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be my worst nightmare at home. I've got a thing about curtain arranging. I was just a... Yeah. One of some of the rings hanging off, but... Yeah. And for me, I, I can't have them resting on the table, but... It's... I must admit, I'd probably drive people mad, but um, uh, without sounding really personal... Um, ah, there is a bit of a smell, cos uh, we found a male kitten. Oh, I've got, I have a dog, I have a huge dog, and I, I spray him with um, deodorant. <laughs> so, um, because I'm not, I just can't stand smells. Male cat's uh, spray. What, is actually sprayed on your carpet? It'll probably, yes. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So I, I, need, I need an industrial cleaner to come and clean the carpet. <laughs> well, this made me feel quite unwell. <laughs> Right, it hasn't sprayed on the chairs as well as he, or...? No, 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 there's just a couple of places he's done it. Well, that would totally freak me out, actually. I, I, I won't know. tell you where, then. I, I, can... I won't tell you where. <laughs> Come into my boudoir. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what to say, actually. Wow. It's quite... Tangy. <laughs> it's quite tangy. It's got a very musty smell, I have to be honest. Yeah. So, I, don't mean, I don't know if it's that or if it's, it's the fact that. that there's about 800 cubic feet of furry toys. Um, why have why there so many toys in here? Because they're all mine. OK. That's freaking me out slightly. Um, they're everywhere. Um, right. And what's all that stuff up there? Is that like a...? Fancy dress clothes. There's all sorts up there. But all the wardrobes are full of clothes. And this is my other wardrobe. Oh, what? Oh, my God. What's that? I've um, got far too many clothes. I need to get rid of them. I keep thinking... You don't wear I'm... these, though, do you? Or... Yes. Don't they smell a bit fausty? Mm. Right, OK. It's, it's on my arm, I can feel it. Um, Baby wipe. Yeah, well, I'll have, one, I'll have to have a wipe in a minute because it feels a bit. Ugh. First impressions are it's awful. I haven't been in a house like this ever. It's just shying away from reality and it's just chaos. Man up, box up, and throw out would probably be the, the easiest way I'd sum that one up. And I'm going to chuck away a lot of the rubbish tomorrow, including her if she gets in the way. Professional cleaner Linda Dykes is personally inspecting the homes of a volunteer army of the country's most obsessive cleaners in a bid to scrub up Britain's dirty homes and streets. I'm going to have a little look in your oven. Oh, my goodness. Spotlessly clean. <laughs> 29-year-old germaphobe Chaser lives in Cambridge. She's obsessed with hygiene and cleanliness. I love cleaning. I could do it, like, for eight, nine hours. The floor needs to be spotless. In total, retail manager Chaser spends four months of each year just cleaning. I love it to look perfect, polished, sparkling. The bathroom just bleached, gleaming, you know, I absolutely love that. I have been known to come home from a night out and home. <laughs> Chaser is so afraid of bacteria that she goes to extremes to ensure everything remains germ-free, including herself and her kids. I have been known to try something on, put it in the bush, and the girls will wear, like, new pyjamas every single night, like, without fail. My neighbours used to go, are you running a laundrette in there? Because they used to have so much clothes out all the time. Like many germaphobes, Chaser feels a compulsion to repeatedly wash her hands. I spent half my life washing my hands. In fact, Chaser washes her hands up to 60 times a day. When I leave the house, I wash my hands. When I get home, I wash my hands. Gotta wash your hands again. It is a pain in my life. I just can't help it. Chaser's obsession with germs began after a bout of serious illness. When I was pregnant, I caught meningitis, and I could have lost my child because of, like, bacteria or a virus, so I became especially clean after that. 
Chase is going to take four days away from her perfectly clean and germ-free home to help someone she's never met before. I'm not going to enjoy going into the dirty house, but I love to clean and, you know, it'd be nice to see a difference, I think, because sometimes when I clean my house, I can't really see much of a difference. Chase is going to be helping 39-year-old nature-loving pagan Amanda, who lives alone in a two-bedroom flat in Oxfordshire. Her home hasn't had a proper clean in over 12 years. I know I have spiders because I have spider webs. I heard a bit of folklore about spiders protecting the house. If you leave the house and you, are, you can ask the spider to protect your house while you're away, um, which I thought was a lovely idea. Witchcraft enthusiast Amanda prefers studying nature to studying the state of her oven. I would rather get out and about than spend all day cleaning and tidying. Do I really have to show you my oven? It is supposed to be self-cleaning. Amanda grew up in a clean and totally clutter-free home. In the 12 years she's lived alone, she's accumulated a vast amount of belongings. I love nature and I love bringing nature in. I like to pick up a lucky stone or some uh, sticks and twigs. I could carve, I could make tent pegs or, or wands. But whilst Amanda's happy with her hoard, her friends and family certainly aren't. My sister told me that I live like a pig in. What is motivating me to have a clear out now is my friends. They make me feel really guilty. And a lot of them don't visit me, and I want them to. But as Chase has got a strong fear of germs, how will she cope with the state of Amanda's home? Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome Hiya. to my home. I just like put this... To... Yeah, put it on the end of the sofa there. Lovely, thank you. This is obviously my living space. Wow. Got a lot of stuff in here. I... Yeah, I <laughs> do. That's the problem. <laughs> um, OK. This is... Well, it was an office. It was a spare bedroom and... Um, a bit it, of everything. It became a place of storage. You've got, like, about 50 CDs over there. How on earth would you ever go to listen to that CD over there? Most of those CDs I had forgotten I have. So how long has this room been like this? Maybe three or four years. But I think if, it, if I'm not using the room, then I don't need to hoover. Wicked. Um, this is my bedroom. I just seem to collect clothes. <laughs> Lovely. Wow. <sighs> Say if you had to clean your bedroom, like today, what would you do? I would probably only clean what I could reach. See, if I had, oh. like, the tiniest bit of cobweb on my ceiling, I would actually be, like, just looking at it, be like, actually, I can't go to sleep. I have to go and get the hoover. OK, this is my kitchen. I don't think I'll be able to cook in your kitchen. Like, my oven is spotless. As soon as I use it, I'll clean it. Okay. Dishes will never be seen in my kitchen sink. Even, like even clean ones. Um, even clean ones. When I come home in the evening, it's about relaxing and putting my feet up. And washing and cleaning is a bit of a chore mm -hmm. for me. This is my bathroom. OK. To me, bathrooms and kitchen is the most important yeah. rooms. Like, mm -hmm. how are you going to wash yourself yeah. or be cleaned if the room is not clean? That's true. Yeah. And also, you're putting things in your mouth and, you know, you are yeah. not got anything. You want it to be clean and hygienic. Yeah. Yeah? Wicked. She obviously does really need this. Like, one room is not livable at all. It's not usable and needs to be sorted out. And if it's not... I think it could get a lot worse. It's bodybuilder Mark's first day at Hoarder Julie's home in Lancashire. I think Mark will be firm with me, but I won't be pushed if I don't want to. 
At home, Mark spends 50 hours a week making sure that every aspect of his life is ordered and routined. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi, thanks. Ready for the big day? Yep. I've come up with a plan. I've got a sort of big box, bigger box theory. So you put stuff in box. When box is full, go to the big box outside. The dog loves that. That's been good. To bring order to Julie's home, Mark's plan is to start by clearing her lounge and bedroom of the items she's been holding on to for years. Yeah, that's good. It's gone now. Once it's in, you can't get it out. Now, that is from the top of my wedding cake. My granddad bought it special for me. Isn't that sort of like old memories that you'd rather get rid of? Mm, my wedding day, even though obviously I'm not married anymore, was still special because, yeah, you know, I was in love with him and... Put it in the bag. Go on. You know you want to. Like, let me help you. It looks bloody awful. Right, that's good. Now, I am keeping these. These were bought for me when I was a baby and they've always been in my life and I am not getting rid of these. I hate to say it, but they look like Spock's ears. That, that can't be interesting, can it? It's an old... Harry Code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the one that I wanted to drive. To, to drive. There's sentimental and there's just mental. Uh, and keeping your highway code book is just, yeah, is the, is the latter. You don't need to go to the gym tonight, yeah, do you? Oh, <laughs> If I hear one more story about old times, uh, I think I'm just going to chuck her in and skip myself, to be honest with it. All right, OK. Psychologists believe that some hoarders develop an emotional attachment to items that others see as worthless even if those items are having a negative impact on day-to-day -day living. <sighs> wow. It's like an Aladdin's cave under there, isn't it? Uh, if I'm honest with you, this is where I think most of the musty smell comes from. There's a lot of damp behind there. There might be some creatures living under there. Actually, I've got something in common with both OCD. Yours is cleaning and mine's hoarding. <laughs> Mm. I, I, You're yeah, well, I th yeah, possibly uh, si ah. similar traits, but I, I, I would say that we're probably worlds apart. You don't want that, that crusty old inner soul, do you know? Professional opinion is divided over whether hoarding is a symptom of obsessive compulsive disorder. Do you know what I actually really think? I'm normal and a lot of other people are quite lazy and I, I revel in being tidy, whereas a lot of people who are untidy badge you as being obsessive uh, to cover for the fact that, quite frankly, their lounge is like that. This is flipping disgusting. Not being behind there for such a long time. See, this is why you can't really compare you to me. I, I, I just couldn't have this just in my world. It's just, it's just not right. Actually, it's made me feel quite ill. Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> that's all right. That's all, it's all good, sort of. Um, disgusted. That room's awful. It stinks. It's full of mould. Uh, that wallpaper's hanging off. The carpet's rotting. It's just downright lazy. It's just awful. Um, and uh, how she can compare me to her, I've got no idea. I'm quite disgusted with myself. You just cover it up with a blanket and it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, but unfortunately, it's definitely not out of my nose because that, that's what you can smell when you come in. Yeah, I'm not happy with myself at all. It's a lot worse than I expected. Didn't expect it to be like that. Because to tell you the truth, if I had a ton, I wouldn't be having you here now. I would never have put myself through this. You look a bit upset. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes it actually takes a bit of a shock and in the nicest sort of possible way of a bit of a kick up the arse for you oh, to... Oh, I need you know, to be for, kick up the bum. Yeah, I mean, you know, and everyone does. Right, should we crack on? Yeah. Right. Right. I know exactly what Mark thought. I just saw his skin crawl. If he'd have got hairs on his arms, I think his hairs would have just jumped off. I'm feeling very disgusted with myself. <laughs> but this way, we'll never get that bad again. 
Britain's public spaces need help. Last year, the government slashed the council services budget by £4 billion, and leisure services and parks were the first to suffer. But expert cleaner Linda Dykes believes that an army of obsessive cleaners could help to bring Britain up to her own high standards. I can't believe how, how improved it is. Today, Linda's in the Peak District, on her way to the small town of Worksworth, where she hopes to clean up a community-run swimming pool. If swimming pools aren't clean, you're open to any kind of infection. I mean, bacteria it increases by the second. It should be absolutely, spotlessly, hygienically clean. Worksworth Pool is at the heart of the community. The council originally ran it, when they decided to close it down, local residents rallied and four months ago set up a charitable trust to keep it open. Would you like to go swimming there? No. No, I wouldn't want him to go near it. With a lack of funding, the pool can't afford a cleaner. And with only two full-time members of staff teaching 300 kids per week, resources are stretched. There is a huge risk that if we didn't improve the facilities, and ultimately it might fail. With the fate of the pool hanging in the balance, Linda's got her work cut out. She believes that by teaming up with volunteers obsessed by cleaning, their individual skills can be used to make a difference. 27-year-old mum of three, Hayley, was diagnosed with OCD in 2007. Every morning I will bleach and disinfect my fridge. I love bleach because there's no bacteria or germs going to slip through that, slip through your suckers. 36-year-old Richard from Sandhurst is obsessed by the urge to clean, tidy and keep order. Order and organisation is a key part of my life. Without it, you're kind of like a ship without a sail. Messy people wind me up. Right, this is the swimming pool area, guys. Ah. Oh. Cute. It's cute. It's yeah. Very cute. I saw yeah. some more. What is yeah. that green yeah. over there? Mold. It is oh, mold. I see. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. it is mold. I've got an issue with that because it's not just unsightly, but there's also health issues associated with the mold. The spores get breathed in oh. and it can cause respiratory problems, it can cause inflammation of the skin, it can cause nosebleeds. It needs a lot of work. Yeah. Mm hmm If I walked in there as a member of the public, it would turn me off. Can we do it, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we, yes, we can. can. In Oxfordshire, compulsive hand washer Chaser is on day one of the clean at Nature Worshipping Amanda's. We've got a skip. <laughs> It's not that thick, it's not that scary. <laughs> it's not. We'll be fine. With four rooms to sort out, she's chosen to start the clean in the room she thinks is the easiest to tackle, the bathroom. I think that we could make a big difference in there. So you think we should do that first then? That sound okay. like a plan? But before they can start cleaning, they need to clear out the hundreds of beauty products Amanda has accumulated. I thought I had a lot of products. <laughs> I'm allergic to dust, so I will be sneezing and things a lot. Bless you. Can you some toilet paper? Do you see, like, all this stuff you're holding, how someone like me it can affect. Imagine what it could be doing to you. I think I've developed an immunity to it, so I'm OK with it, which is why I'm <sighs> comfortable in the show. I'm not making any changes. <coughs> I do find it surprising that somebody has such a reaction to the dust and the mould, etc. But that could be because she doesn't have it in her own life and she's not used to it. I just want to get it all done and clean, but I'm just finding it um, hard to breathe, like... It's just so stuffy and so much dust, and I am allergic to dust, but I don't think I've ever been in an environment that has hit me so hard. Amanda it. asked for help to clean up her home because her friends aren't comfortable visiting her. Is there anything you'd rather be doing, Amanda? 
anything but this. I'd rather be with my friends than clearing my house, which is my space, and I didn't mind it being like this. You didn't mind it? No. If I minded, I'd have done something about it. So why did you ask for help? Because obviously I need it. People are telling me that I can't look after myself. People are telling me but that I don't. Don't you a... mind? Well, no, because I would quite happily live like this. Um, I mean, in terms of dirt, obviously I'm aware of, of clutter and needing to get rid of a lot of stuff. But I, I you know, I, it's my space. I don't mind a cobweb or a dirt or I mean. I'm doing this like you to help you you know to yeah. make this a better environment for you but if you don't yeah. mind it then well, it kind of makes you lose heart and makes me think are you just gonna let it go back i don't know i just don't think she can carry on like this she's obviously knows that she needed help because she asked for it. She obviously knows that it's gotten on top of her, but maybe she's a little bit defensive. So yeah, it does feel like, why are we doing this if it's just gonna go back? In Lancashire, curtain-obsessed Mark is on day three of the clear-up at Hoarder Julie's house. Yesterday, he cleared out almost a skipful of clutter from the lounge, and now the damp and rotting wallpaper is finally being replaced. Right. Today, Mark's strategy is to clear the bedroom of Julie's vast collection of cuddly toys. What's the fetish and why are they so important? That one fell in there by accident. No, not the elephant. I've just always been from a little girl. I've always had cuddly toys. Well, yeah, but, but you're sort of 47 now. Never too old to have teddy bears. Clearly. Experts believe that some people hoard items such as toys for fear of letting go of the past and moving on with their lives in the present. That one there, that looks like Tintin with the quiff, that yeah, probably you just... will never. No. I am sorry. This no, is what, what I've had from a baby. This is my doll, and this is my Jane, and I ain't losing her. All right. This ain't going either. That is the dirtiest teddy of all. I don't care. This is my teddy, and I ain't getting rid of it. If there's that valuable, do you not think a bit of TLC wouldn't go amiss? Like maybe took them to the dry. Look at the dust. That, well, I won't. I won't do it in here. No, don't do that. Do you not think that? Uh, <clears throat> They need a good brushing down. Brushing? They need a jet washer. Having made some headway with Julie's soft toys, Mark now wants to move on to her vast collection of clothes. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> and the found a spider. <laughs> she said I was eccentric. Have you ever stopped to think the reason there might be a 100 spiders living in your home is so you're actually cultivating them with the... Uh... Yeah. With the, oh. This is clean on today, look. Damn it. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking. Faster. No, I can't do it fast. Think of it as a cardio workout. Are you like a clothes hoarder? Yes, I'm very much a big clothes hoarder. I seem to be able to smell out a charity shop that as soon as I walk down the street, oh, look, there's a charity shop. And if I see something I like, I buy it. Because... What, what, not if you, what, if you don't even need it, or? Oh, yeah. I still got a tag in it, but I still got. A... I know. If it's a pound and it fits, I'll get it. I just can't, just can't relate to that at all. I can't even see the bed at the moment for clothes. Um... I mean, people have told me I'm a difficult person to live with because of my obsessive nature. I must be an absolute dream to be with compared to this dream. Dream. In Worksworth, it's the day of the swimming pool clean-up. Morning. Hello. And the whole community has turned out to help Linda and the clean team. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yes, come on. Come on. Poolside, the local girls' football team make a start scrubbing the mould. While Linda and her team concentrate on the changing rooms. I want to do the bathroom myself because I want it my way, the Linda way. Bleach addict Hayley is focused on tackling the deep-seated mould in the shower. 
we're going to get the anti back spray on there. I'll get you another bucket of water. At home, Haley is so afraid of germs that she gets through at least one bottle of bleach every single day. So we each take a tap as well. But Linda's particular trademark is making everything sparkle. The downside of working in a team of obsessive cleaners is that their methods can often clash. Um, could you use this, please, on the um, stainless steel area? Because I want that sparkling, please. Okay, it will this be. will Leave help you us. scrub it first when you put this on, and okay. then if you could buff it up with a microfiber, right. have it sparkling. What? Okay. Hello. Are you doing? Well, you should have been on the job, shouldn't you? Yeah. Absolutely not. Take no notice of her. No. You should have given him this already. Linda, pipe down. No, you should have given him this already. <laughs> We're doing it my way. My way or the highway. You're on Team Hayley. I'm with you, We're Hayley. a good team. I'm with oh, you. my God, okay. amazing. Let's go. See you, Linda. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> I'm going to have her in a minute. Hayley! <laughs> so, take no notice of Linda. Okay. If she tells you to do something, just say, look, uh, I'm not doing it your way. OK. And if she says anything, then come and get me. OK. Bernardo, it's Hayley's way. It's my way. OK. My okay. way or the highway. Yeah. Awesome. Right, can I carry on cleaning now? She hasn't given them the right cleaning tools. I'm very unimpressed. I've still got this in my hand now. Yeah. It's needed for those blooming stainless steel things. I'm actually so angry. I'm putting my team to work and they're doing it my way. And they're like, yeah. Linda's coming along and she's like, no, that's not how you do it. And I'm like, it's so annoying. I'm getting on my nerves. See, for me, it's more the germs. I know for you, you like a good shine. Whereas for me, I, I, it's not about if it's shiny or not. It's more about have you used the anti back on that and got rid of all the germs because people are going to be touching that. I need to point out that I wasn't criticising. I feel like I you was were. helping because I think you see an opportunity and you're like, I'm just going to get in there and interfere. It's really not necessary because I feel like I was using the right products. Hayley, if you were using I the was. right products, Linda. I would never have interfered. Linda! Those poor lads are scrubbing away and now they've got to redo the whole thing because they haven't been using the right stuff. So you've made work harder for them now. You're not helping now, you're I interfering. Did help you. In Oxfordshire, germaphobe Chaser has taken four days away from her obsessively clean life to help wildlife lover Amanda. These keep. It's day two of the clean and progress is slow. Keep, sell, or throw. Keep. This. Keep. Keep. It's sort of the asking for more and, oh, can't we get rid of more and more and more? And I'm like, but, yeah, be gentle with me. Why can't I keep these things? And, and it's almost the more people want me to get rid of them and clear out, the more I want to keep them. Does that fit you? No, but I plan to. OK. Amanda, can I have a quick word? I feel that I'm not making any progress because I feel every little item I've got to be like, Amanda, can you keep this like half empty bottle of water? Do you know what I mean? Like, just give me some sort of instruction so then I can get on with things. Uh, it's up to you. No, like, no, I know exactly what you're saying. I'm just give me a moment to think. If you don't stop being okay, don't want this, want this, don't want this, want this, yeah. we're not gonna get it. Yeah, no, I understood, yeah. I don't know how we're going to do it. How can we make it livable when someone doesn't want to part with it? It's very, very difficult. The community clean at Worksworth Pool is complete. <laughs> the pool has been under financial strain, but the local Rotary Club has said that if they're impressed, they might donate some money. Come in. My pleasure. Lovely. Rotary treasurer Tony has come to see the finished article. We'll start off in the men's. The changing rooms used to be grubby, dusty and smeary. It's all been scrubbed, cleaned, polished up. That is incredible. You've done a good job scrubbing up here. Thank you. I can't believe how clean it smells. It's lovely. As for the main pool space, the mould, rust and mucky surfaces made it look tired and unhygienic. It's not fantastic. Well, 
Hello. That is incredible. The clutter is gone, the shower's been polished, and everything looks fresh and clean. You're to be congratulated on that. It is really lovely. The sides got retiled to get rid of all the mould, and every fixture's had a real spruce up. Absolutely superb. You've done a lovely job there. Tony seems impressed, but will he recommend the Rotary Club make a donation? The community have all gathered in the newly cleaned pool to find out. Can I have everybody's attention? Thanks to Linda and her team, and thanks to everybody else that's taken part today, we can now look at this pool and see it looks a lot better than it did previously. And we've had some more good news, because the Rotary have agreed to fund further projects to help us improve the pool even more. And the future looks bright and works with pool. It looks so clean and inviting and, and wholesome, really. So I think we'll respond as generously as we can. Hopefully we're going to reach a point where we can employ a full-time cleaner. And the full-time cleaner has to be OCD. I must say, I'm bloody knackered, but I'm it was ready well for worth bed. it. Yeah. And thanks, Brilliant. guys, clean for all team. your help. Well done. Well done. It's the final day of the clean in Oxfordshire, and having met with resistance whilst trying to clean up the bathroom and kitchen, germ-phobic Chaser has moved on to Amanda's messy living room. Do you want to keep all the plants? I know it looks dead, but the ends are alive, so, I mean, if you can detangle it. Mm -hmm. I know you said you want to keep this chair, but we've just discovered... It doesn't have a seat. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to keep it? Yes. OK. And you said this plant can go? No, not that one. Oh. OK. These things are not going anywhere, OK? I want to keep these things, and I've already been through this room. OK. I don't think I'm doing anything. I can do anything, so it's not I a lot of thought, I thought you were going to clean the windowsill for me to put things on. I'm just getting really upset now. I'm really frustrated because... What is the point? I don't know, to clean someone, voluntarily help clean someone's house, and then they won't let me. At the end of the day, I've got a life, I've got children, I could be at home doing things, but I'm just standing here in a house that is not very clean and I don't feel comfortable in, and I'm not enjoying to help someone clean and sort out their life, but they won't let me. I feel really, really bad because I just feel that I haven't come in here made as much of a difference that I wanted to. Like, I thought I was literally going to go into a house and clean it, blitz it, do what I do best. And I do think, like, I've been, like, compromising. I'm not doing... You, you haven't been able to do what you would feel yeah. instinctive to do. Yeah, yeah. But you've done as much as you can. We're two instinctively different people and we can't be yeah. the same person and we're too extreme yeah, that's to, I'm to, to, to you. flip yeah. over. If yeah. anything, we're going to find a middle ground. We're not, I'm not going to be on the more clean side. It's bodybuilder Mark's last day in Lancashire. He's been trying to help Julie clean up the house she's neglected for years. Having persuaded her to part with the clutter she hoarded, Mark now wants to put the finishing touches to the home. Julie. Yes, dear? There's a dog poo on the carpet. <laughs> it nearly went on my shoe. I believe you the cat. <laughs> There's me polishing the window, and I'm nearly stepping in a cat shit. He's never done that before. Oh. He's never done that before. Well, it's a present for it's a housewoman present. I'm gonna kill that cat. <laughs> I'm gonna kill the cat. Oh. Sorry, I know I shouldn't laugh, but that is so offensive. Julie's partner is due any minute. But for Mark, the house isn't ready until everything is arranged in his own particular way. Her partner Darren has arrived, along with her two daughters, 19-year-old Catherine and 15-year-old Laura. 
Laura was previously too embarrassed to invite friends over to the house. Four days ago, Julie's living room was rammed full of years of clutter and the wallpaper was mouldy and damp. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, what a transformation. This is totally different. Wow. Usually when you come in before, you, you, you had to sort of... Side be careful where you side stood, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can sort of uh, move around. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's more spacious. I like the cabinet, I like the walls. So does it meet with the girls' seal of approval? Yeah, we can sit and watch TV then, can't we? You yeah. can have that sofa rather than the big one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to invite my friend down more often. <laughs> I'm just sorry that it's that and up until now you haven't been happy to say this is your home. But now, hopefully, don't you stop. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs in the bedroom, Mark persuaded Julie to part with 30 of her cuddly toys and 103 kilos of clothes, many of which had never been worn. Are you ready for this? Yes. Oh, wow. That is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> oh, good grief. I, I can't believe it. What's, what, where's, all the, where's all your pile of claws gone? And you actually get into the wardrobe now as well. So the first task we had was uh, to remove the... Uh, plethora of toys from up here yeah yes, that's right yeah i'd found it quite unnerving actually sort of like lying there with, with about 10 million sets of eyes watching you yes <laughs> yeah, yeah good stuff well done <laughs> well done excellent if i start hoarding again or even try to you have permission you know. to smack me <laughs> we can see what it does for the house can't you i know i know, I know, I know. Yeah. much more space yeah it... right guys my time here has come to an end so um i'll leave it up to you to keep it in shape now and uh, I'm off. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Having my house decluttered and cleaned has given me a real big wake up call. I don't want to do it again. Well, I'm really pleased I could put my slightly bizarre, obsessive, however you want to describe it, behaviour to good use. I can go back feeling like I've achieved something, which is good. It's almost the end of the clean for germaphobe Chaser. So far, she's had a hard time persuading Eco Amanda to part with any of her belongings. Do you want to put that in the skip for me? This whole box? It'll make a nice sound when you chuck it in. Did you go through it? No, because if I do, we'll be here a while and I'll be pulling things out. <laughs> Amanda's friend Colette has previously felt uncomfortable visiting the flat. Four days ago, the living room was dirty, cluttered and unloved, and the dining table was invisible beneath mountains of rubbish. Hello. Come in. Oh, you're looking gorgeous. How are you doing? Wow. Are I've you I've never shocked? been able to walk to your table. This is fantastic. I feel like crying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All done you. 15 sacks of unused clothes have gone from the bedroom, revealing the floor and furniture. With 20 box loads removed from the spare room, it's possible to get inside for the first time in over three years. The bathroom is now a clean and clear space which Amanda can enjoy. And the kitchen is up to germaphobe chasers exacting standards. The surfaces are all done. And the washing up's done. I know. It's beautiful. You can invite us all round now. A taste for progress and hopefully you won't get to that stage again. I'm not going to get to that stage again. Cheers. Cheers. It's all been a bit mad and intense, but I like it. Thank you so much, honey. Thank you. I've had a lovely You're time. You're amazing. At times, I didn't think we were going to make it. I felt like I was hitting a brick wall, but we did it. She, she can use every single room of her house. She's got a house that a lot of people would consider normal. It may not be my ideal, but it's clean and it's livable. And for a person that does worry about cleanliness and germs, I think I did pretty good.